Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and the very much still in progress E. coli. So today, sir and sirettes, we're going to try and get as far as possible in finishing off our lovely behemoth of the ship, which is now taken on two new ships, freighter ships. Look, I have freighter crates and everything for the missiles, yay. And I've improved the laser defense system now to have three segments each, and now all, 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 Everywhere on the ship we have little laser warning things which are very, very cute. Just to make sure that at any given time we should be able to detect a missile and very happily shoot it down before it comes and wrecks my face. So, but today I have kind of had an idea. When I was thinking about the, the whole laser warning system and such, I thought to myself, why not just use a spin block? A spin block would A, look freaking awesome, and B, be freaking functional. So that's what we're doing today, sir and sirettes. On both of these ships, uh, both of these side ships, I'm going to be adding a small spin block, or two small sp spin blocks on the front, which, which have the express purpose of, well, carrying missile warning systems. And if they work, then well, I'll be very happy. And if they don't work, then oh well, too bad. They're still going to look freaking cool. So we're going to delete this one. And have it on the actually no, should have it on the outer of the inner. I think the inner would be better, as that way you can catch in that direction. As we already have lots on the sides, so I think here would be best. So new object, and we want a spin block. I want a precision turning spin block. We, we won't need to controls for these since um, they're going to be quite well simple. Honestly, they're going to be very simple, and they're going to be on permanently. So we're going to have them on all the time on the same speed. So, oh yeah, so we'll actually need a controller somewhere, but we'll have it somewhere hidden away. What I was meant to say was we don't need one for every spin block. That's what I should have said, rather. Okay, so, nice and simple. Let's just see how it does. Let's use a nice metal block, just regular colour. There we go, and then we need the AI... Se oh, actually, no, we do need the, the AI segment, don't we? So, never mind, we'll try, try that for an AI segment. Then we'll have a laser missile warner, rather and have it like this and although already that's basically seeing everything this should be able now to spin around happily and tell me if there is a missile inbound as soon as I turn it on so let's just test that out so be in control um, okay uh, back to hull control for a second thank you and then we want the automatic control block you can, we can put it here if we like and then we want where are you activate after spawn, zero seconds, so as soon as it spawns, activate. And I want all spin blocks to spin at that speed. <laughs> That's kind of cute. I'm a bit slower than that, though. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to be too quick. Like that. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. And, and that way it can detect missiles from all this area and is, is indeed attached to the AI system, which is fantastic. Okay, so we kind of want one, one of these on each side just for fun. We can make something more elaborate with this kind of system. I kind of want... Uh, you see, I've never really used spin blocks much for, well, much, honestly, other than um, helicopter blades. So I am kind of tempted to try and use them perhaps for shields or just very cool looking things, as I kind of want something for the main hull up there, a spinning um, piece of metal to go round using the light blocks. Where are you? Light blocks there, which can actually go through things. They are completely ethereal. Ooh. So that's rather awesome. It's weak to explosions, yes, okay. It releases a lot of energy when destroyed, so it's it's more for looks. So if I wanted, like, a, a ring of metal to go around, so I could use that. Okay, so that's kind of the concept. Also, I just thought, if we edit the spinner, let's go onto control, let's go save sub-object as um, simple detector. There we go, simple detector. And then go back to hull. And then we, back, then we re mirror the um, thing. We should be able to just put them on both sides, shouldn't we, by doing this? So, simple detector, and let's just put one down. Let's say, where did I put that one in the middle here? Okay, so put one here. And if I still had the control block, let's delete that bit there. Now there should be two on there. That's really cool. That's actually really cool, I've got to say. I mean, what you could do. And probably would be a bit better is you could also have one on the top so it can look up as well and then have just sacrifice one of these side ones for the actual receiver. That would actually be better. So let's do that. So AI and we want the receiver instead to be here. 
like so, and then we want the da, 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 where are you missile warner to be looking up like so. Okay, so once again, we go into E and we save that as a sub object. In fact, we delete the old one to do so. Then we go back to doing the hull. Sadly, you have to remember every time we do this, you do have to re mirror, otherwise, it's off, which is a bit of a shame. Is there a button to like put it right in the middle of the ship? There probably isn't, but it'd be nice if there was. Okay, so pop that off. Goodbye, pop the new one on. There we go, purely because this way it'll mirror it to the other side, even though we already had it there. So that way now we have two of these on both sides. Fantastic. Yeah, that's not a terrible idea. That's really not a terrible idea, having these things. This will save me a lot of hassle. Plus then I can have a couple on the back as well, just in case a missile comes past me. I have three, in fact. That's a nice use of the spin block, actually. That's quite. Si that's very simple and very nice. I'm not quite sure the range of these things, how far they can actually see. Uh, I'll use C block almost um, inverted commas there, but okay. So that's very cool. So now all we need to do is go on AI and a an action. No, sorry, no control and an actual automated control block. This will be the one that actually stays, and we'll put that in the hull. And by the way, you're about to see some silly things in here, and I've, which I've added just for looks, which are the missile warning systems on the inside. Of course, missile warning systems need to have sight to see the thing. That has to be in line of sight, which I do believe is blocked by blocks. I'm not sure if it is or not, honestly, but I do think it is. So, once again, we could have the silly one, which is, um, oh, where is it? The one, a greater, if, it's, if the altitude is less than almost infinite, then all the spin blocks can spin. If somehow the Ecolite is flying, then you know what? You can turn them off. And let's see if that would be enough to look cool. Well, to look natural. Yes, it is. Okay, fantastic. I really like that. I think it looks better with the thing on top, but I actually really do like that. Just really simple thing. It's attached to the to the main thing because um, the laser defense system I've decided to put with the main um, AI. The new AI will be attached to the missile systems and the other weapon system I'm still kind of deciding on. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to sort out the last weapon system for these two. Then I'll do the, again, the prettifying off camera. But honestly, there's not much to do. Like I say, I want this to look almost like just an empty... Uh, an empty... What would... I called it a second guy freighter, which is very simple. It's pretty much like this. It's a very hollow kind of structure with metal walls and you know, grey metal. They're not pretty. That's kind of what I want. I want if we just grabbed one of those and just shoved it on. Like that's big enough to attach and make work use of. There we go. Look at it spinning around. That's so cute. Oh, I could fit them on the back of here as well. Well, I guess I'll be doing that as well then. Let's add one here and then one on the other side as well. There we go. Oh, I, ha I have also improved the laser defense system a little bit. It's still not that great. It's still obviously not big as it is, but it's got it's, it's actually got excess power for how much um, we've got here. But I've made it a lot faster shooting. So, so threats. I've got two different things I kind of want to add to this. The the missile system is done, and I've checked it out. It causes almost no lag because it's got a five second delay between missiles. The missiles don't stack up as fast as they basically despawn in the, once they get going, and um, they don't have the proximity heads like they did before which causes all sorts of problems. So, the two options is A, a, a laser system with lots and lots of the um, turrets. So essentially it shoots like 10 really weak lasers per shot at a rapid rate. So it looks really cool, like D -d 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 -d. even though each shot's not doing much damage, it's kind of the equivalent of shoot shooting lo loads of explosive um, turret shots. A second option is to have a huge kind of ramshackle um, mounted regular cannon on here. And that is tempting to me, honestly. So it's like being held aloft here-ish. It'll have two turrets because because this this building, as I discussed last time, isn't an odd number. It's an even number, in that um, it's got an even number of spaces from one side to the other. So you can't really have a, a direct middle because I don't really want that. Because everything I always do is odd, and I find that quite boring. So the idea is we have a turret here and a turret on here. This way, it's kind of in the middle. Plus, you know, two turrets better than one and all that. And it's being held aloft by chains and stuff, and it's got like um, just red metal hunkering it onto the hull. And that I kind of like the look of, kind of like, like the idea of, and I think that's probably what I'm going to go with. But the laser option is really something I am very tempted with purely because it's a laser, and I kind of like lasers. To put it bluntly, I do like lasers. I kind of feel like I need some of these detectors in here, though, somewhere, just because I don't really have any protection. Here, let's just put it here. Uh, one further in, and there we go. 
Yay, so it does go sideways. There we go, detectors everywhere. There's no why in hell you're not being detected if you've shot a missile at me. Okay, so I'll be right back once I've decided and we can get to work with the system. Okay, so and so I have finally decided that I, I am indeed going to go with the huge cannon. Now, I do realise that as you upgrade the cannon's gauge, after a certain point it becomes very, very mild. The upgrade gets weaker and weaker every time you add another piece of gauge. It's, um, what's the word for what I'm looking for here? It has a redundancy, not, redund not redundancy factor, silly old Lathrix. It has diminishing returns. Now, the diminishing returns get very, very harsh, and I am aware of this, however, 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 I really, really do want a cannon which has a ridiculous amount of gauge, so that the actual cannon itself will. When it shoots, it should shoot a shell which is twice the size of the regular cannon, so that should be fantastic. Of course, that is almost impossible again, because it does get worse, and every time you add one, it's more and more obvious. So, yeah. So how we're going to do it is, I'm going to make a big stand here. Now, I, uh, the problem is, the only problem I have is now the laser defense system is going to be blocked slightly from the front. However, I am going to be moving that to the front as well. Um, I'm going to be, this so why I've got a little bit extra space on this one here. This little block here, space. That, that's going to shoot a laser all the way to the front, and I'm going to have this system on the front as well. So don't worry, I'm, I'm actually doubling the system later on. So, so this really only is for the back and side defense anyway, so that's not really too much of the bother if this actually does block it, so that's fine. Should I maybe change the colour of this? No, I think that's all these pieces. So, how high do I want it? I kind of want it quite high up, even if it will make it vulnerable, just because that way I can work with it in terms of, like, strapping it in and stuff. Which would be kind of cool, I think. Though I don't want a full amount there. Okay, I think I'm just going to use blocks here, because I kind of want half. Uh, one more of these, so... One, two... About that high? Yeah, okay, that's about as high as I'd like. It wouldn't want any, any higher than this. And then we'll have another stand just up front a little bit, so about here-ish. Metal block, and we want the metal beams. And that goes there, then that goes here. And once again, don't worry, Sonstress, I will be prettying this up off camera. Like I say, it's a, it's quite lengthy. I'll tell you it's not one of the lengthiest processes in this game, is making things look good afterwards. I'm just trying to get like the basic functionality sorted. So things like an um, aero... Well, I don't really care to carry this thing as well. A few of you did mention this, and I, I am and I completely understand the um, problem here. Is with the aerodynamics. I think that might be the wrong word there, but um, basically, basically, I make the front of my vehicle a bit too flat, and that slows me down in the water. The thing is, with the coli, I don't really care. It's a bit funny to say, but as much as I know it makes everything less efficient, because of course you need more engine power for the same speed. I almost don't move the E. coli. The only times I move the E. coli is after a fight, and even then it's very mild. If I was making a smaller ship that relies more on its positioning rather than being a essentially a moving fortress, then I would certainly, yeah, 100%, that is a massive issue, and I do, of course, take your concerns into account there. But um, right now with this, it's kind of like on the lower end of my concerns, if you know what I'm trying to say, so... And boy, yes, I am using the glass as quote-unquote chains, because, well, a lot of the, um... Actually, I've seen it before. Is there a way, perhaps, to make... So if I change the colour, it changes the colour of the frame itself, doesn't it? So would it be a way to make it look more chain-like, from a distance? Like, does, does that look more like chain from distance? Because I've seen it be used very, very well in some of the, uh, some of the AI ships, ones made by the community. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say black definitely looks more like chain than the regular kind of light metal because because it blends in with the glass itself, whereas this makes it stand out a fair bit more. Tiny little thing there. Cool. Okay. Of course, if I did, if I really wanted to put some serious effort into it, I wouldn't make it completely straight either. It'd be kind of uh, wonky and such. It has like that kind of chain lax feel to it and stuff. But um, right now, I just want to put that there because I kind of want to put that there. Okay. So this is going to be the platform. So let's actually make the platform then, and this can be the regular metal, like from the E. coli, as this is metal which is being used to craft rather than just the natural ship. The pillars I could always I could always make the excuse of, perhaps a crane. Oh my lord, that's it, exactly. This this pillar used to be a crane. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, one of, one of the cranes like put things on and off the ship. That's wonderful, okay. Made up some lore. Excellent. Okay, I will just um, fill this in. 
sort of skip ahead here probably. Okay, so there's that. The basic platform is done. I'm, I'm actually really liking the look of this now because it is really looking like something that has been attached and then reattached and attached again. It's just these old rusty things. I'm actually going to rust the um, hull. I'm going to, act off camera by the way, I was going to mention this earlier but forgot. I'm going to make quite a rusty kind of orangey colour and I'm going to be using that to um, add patches to the hull and stuff so it looks like it's very old. I'm also tempted not to add shields or to add kind of ramshackle spinning shields to this thing. Once again, making it look like it's kind of just been attached on the fly. Okay, so we want the cannon piece to be quite far back. Now, I'm going to actually put both of the one... It'll look a little bit weird, but I've got reason for it. I'm going to have both of the firing pieces very, very close to each other. So, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Eight. And there, the two I'll keep. Okay, the knees get removed. And that's where the firing pieces will be. Probably, probably a bit more in the middle. Uh, now I think about it, just, just, just for protection's sake. And the reason is, when they have the huge gauge, I'm going to add. And by the way, I, I am going to add like a. So remember, there will be a turret structure on top of here. It won't just be flat. Um, I want them. I want the barrels to basically uh, clip into each other quite a bit, so that halfway here, I can add a pillar to essentially hold. The, um, the the turret when it's not being fired. Although well, it's not actually a turret, is it anymore? Hmm. Words. Okay, so we're going to need almost pure motor driven. This is not anti um, air at all. It's going to be purely just left and right. So all the way to about there. It's going to be huge, like I was saying, and this will make sure it's actually quite accurate as well. At the very end, I'll add one. I'll add a tiny bit of um, elevation barrels. I'll add two or three elevation. No, one elevation, then about four or five suppression. So, a single elevation, because these things very quickly stop it from turning left and right. And then we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then we're going to work out the gauge first. So right now, that's what it is. It has 80 elevation and 22. So it can't shoot too much left and right, but can shoot all the way up. That's what one elevation barrel does, by the way. That's why I was a bit um, stingy there. Okay, so, so six-way connectors. Let's get working here. So, the turret itself is still needs to be smaller than the rest. Okay, so, a space. Okay, so, da -da 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 -da. okay, there we are. That's what I wanted to see. There's a reason I'm doing all this. It's just so that if I have a auto loader here, I can also have an auto loader there. Then I can have ammo down the middle, and I can do that up and up and up and up and up, and that way its fire rate won't be too slow considering that of gauge I'm about to add, which I'm actually going to add here on top of this, but not all the way. And then do the same over here, gauge all the way. And yes, I know it's probably better ways of doing turrets. Again, I'm not an expert at this game, and I don't really want to spend too much time learning the every little meta of the game. I just have fun. That's the thing. I just have fun. Then this is where the next load of ammo will be. And then once again we go into the gauge. Now I could have this as a crate as well, but I don't think I will. I will try to make it a little bit circular, a bit of the style of the other turrets on there since, well, it does have a st I finally kind of figured out a bit of a style for this whole thing, so I'll try and keep it that way. Obviously, we're going to need the explosive barrels as well, and they're going to go on the top and the front, because, well, honestly, even if you have loads of gauge, if you don't have explosive and um, armor piercing, you are missing out on quite a bit. Now, that's going to be a very, very high gauge cannon already. Okay, I think that's about as big as it's going to get, though, in terms of actual size of the cannon. There we go. Classic damage. Is two five okay? Just out of curiosity, so two five seven eight. Let's add like a line here. Oh, that only goes up by two. So obviously we kind of hit the redundancy. We kind of hit the diminishing returns head on there and just carried on. So we're kind of already done. So what we do is this. Now we have the auto loaders here and here. Then we keep putting that on every second row. Yeah, that's the one. And then here as well. And you'll see the method in my madness in a second. All of them here as well. Do I have them on auto? On Yeah, good. Oh, damn. I was meant to be putting them on automatic. Oh, well, that's not too bad. I don't know if I actually was or wasn't. Then we get the ammo boxes, and these go all in here, and that should... 
all connect. But not only that, we now have the space in the middle between them as well, which means there's a lot of stuff we can add. So we put them here as well, and this should keep the fire right nice and decent considering how big the cannon is. And of course the fact we're going to have four of these cannons, because of course each one of these is a separate cannon. It's going to be a rather big gun. There we are. Okay, very, very nice. And last ones here and the other side. Then we'll test it and then we'll reproduce it next to it. So we've got two of them. Okay, so do that. Da -da -da. Hello! Let, let's just run across the um, barrel because I can. <laughs> oh, that's low it aims. I love that. Oh, look at the size of those shells. That's just fantastic. Oh, these go miles. These are going to cause so much damage to anything they touch. Especially when they're explosive. My little freighter ships are growing up. I'm actually tempted as well, as I say, to, to um, break it off, uh, so like save this entire ship and spawn it in as its own ship. So it can be used on its own as well. That would be kind of cool, but I don't think it'll, it'll, it, it would have enough flotation, because right now it's actually slowly going down because of the sheer amount of weight we're adding. This section back here, as you can probably tell, I am eventually going to be turning into the helm, but once again, that will be part of the prettifying. Okay, so let's redo that on the other side, then we'll think about how to do the explos the explosive things, which I think will go on this side, which was part of the plan. Oh, before before we continue, Sir and Sweats, I know a lot of you will have pointed this out, so I'm, I was just trying to show... There we go. Um, as you can see, um, the missiles themselves will not be bouncing off the turrets, because thankfully how this game handles turrets is that um, your weapons in particular, missiles and such, will not hit a turret unless the turret is in the normal position. Essentially, if the turret is moved from its regular position to fire, it, it, it does not count as being an entity that can be collided with. As you can see, the missiles are simply going through, not being impacted in the slightest, and they're all just going on their merry way. So that won't be an issue at all. Just to point that out, because I'm sure a lot of you will have by now mentioned this. Or thought about this, because I certainly would have before someone told me you can even do that, because I was actually unaware until one of you lovely commenters told me. Okay, so the two segments are now done, and I've just noticed that this thing has an inaccuracy rate of 0 0.01. That's actually kind of impressive. Okay, anyway, so what we would... Sadly, a lot of recoil still, but thankfully the coli is certainly heavy enough to handle it, so it's not too much of an issue. So now we're going to do the age-old problem of explosive warheads. So... Let's see, what am I actually aiming at here? The thing is, um, it's going to seem extre extremely high, purely because of the slow fire rate. If you have an extremely fast fire rate gun, well, it's not an extremely slow fire rate, but um, if you've got a very slow fire rate um, weapon, it goes higher. If you've got an extremely fast one, it's a lot lower, because obviously you're shooting more shots and the shells can only replenish so much, yada yada yada, you get the idea. How much is it now? 500. Okay, so I've started to hit diminishing returns already, and I think... Yeah, that's really a hit diminishing returns. Um, okay, we're at 500 and that. So let's now jump over to armor piercing. The minimum, I, the minimum I want is 10. The absolute minimum I would like in armor piercing is 10, and that's giving us 11.5. So the minimum I want is already attached. I will probably add more explosives until I see the diminishing returns get to a stage where it's just well, there's absolutely no point in adding anymore. A bit, a bit like the gauge, only adding um, two damage for like a good line of them. Oops, there's it. And then that should be the armor piercers, like so. And then the turret is da 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 da, da. lovely. Uh, I left. Oh, the armor piercing's a bit different. Why? Uh, where did I miss an armor piercing? Whoops, a day. See, one of these things is not armor piercing. Where? Oh, it's this one here. Okay, click. There we go. So same arm, arm piercing. Yes. Let's make sure they're actually completely identical. Uh, 11.5, 11.5, 543 damage. Yep, okay, it's uh, perfectly identical in every way. And that was mirrored, so yep, they're all sorted. Now I actually, actually, actually have to make the turret part itself. And I'll be right back with that, because that's going to be the metal. And that one I think I'll go with the darker. Ooh, how about this black? Actually, no, I've got pure pitch black. Let's go with the more neutral, kind of dark grey. Well, there we have it. The back section of the turret is finished. The front section I'm 
considering how to actually make it look, but now it looks a lot better, now it's actually got the colours on correctly. So obviously now this is a hell of a lot heavier and the freighters are currently basically underwater. But thankfully it's still floating, it's holding its own. Nothing's really sinking, it's not going down any further. I just need to add more, um, I, I need to make it deeper than I first thought I was going to, so this is just going to have to go lower than it is currently. Oh, but it could possibly be the problem I don't even have these floating. Oh, well that's good, I don't even know that. I, I thought I'd put air pumps in here. Well, there... Pff, well, there we are, it's probably solved the issue. There we go. How many cubic... <laughs> Oh jeez, almost 4,000 cubic meters worth of um, buoyancy I just added. Well that solved the problem instantly. I honestly thought I had solved that. And I've got those two holes there because I was going to add the laser system there. And yeah, I thought, well, I thought wrong clearly and that's the important thing there. Okay, so what I like about this is it looks like these are these are meant to be... Uh, see, the problem is actually, I don't like how this is coming out of there. I'm going to raise the, um, the firing segment one higher actually because I don't like that. It looks like it's coming out at the very bottom, it should be coming out at the top, let's just do that so I fall over. But yeah, I like the idea of it, because it looks like it's part of an actual turret, as in, you know, a movable turret, but they simply didn't have enough time, or, you know, they're strapped for resources, so they couldn't make an actual moving piece and everything. So all they've done is they've essentially put it onto a stationary platform, which I think is really cool, I think it's a, I think it's a nice idea, personally, but of course I would, since, well, it's my idea, so naturally. I would do that. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Uh, they need to be like. Uh, okay, we have to do it inwards instead. We can't do it outwards. If we do it outwards, they'll touch, and as soon as they touch, one of the turrets will take all the bonuses from the other one, and that of course makes it a bit silly. Okay, uh, how about one higher? I mean, have one higher to be safe. No. Okay, let's do it here, and if it's not good enough, we'll do it off camera. I can do it off camera. That's fine. So uh, once again, cannons firing piece. Now let's re-add the barrels. So two things, I've changed the colour to make it darker, I think that does look a lot better, and I've also made it a lot smaller. Uh, I did check the accuracy and this is still just as accurate, actually no, I think it's a little bit less accurate, but to such a degree it really won't matter, but it does look to me a lot better. And so, yeah, 0 0.05 rather than 0 0.01, oh the humanity. So now to add the final thing which I wanted to add, which is the metal support beams. And that will be that done, okay, let's have these here. Okay, and just going for the height, there we are. Uh, do I actually want it that high though? I kind of want it like it's support. Hmm. We'll have to look how it looks. Okay, then we have metal blocks. Of course, like I say, I'm, I'm, I, I'll make this thinner in a second. I just want it to look. Doesn't need to be right there, so I think it'd be one further out, so like here ish. Like that. There we go. That looks nice in my opinion, that looks simple and nice, it's just holding the gun in place. So like I was trying to say before, it looks like it's been taken off some other derelict ship, possibly a damaged ship, possibly an enemy ship, who knows. Somebody in the comments by the way, again I'm sorry, I don't remember your names and I see, I, I, unless I ask you if it's okay to say your name, I do prefer not to say people's names anyway, so whatever. Um, had the brilliant idea that perhaps the coli should be stealing from every ship from every time every time it like destroys a base it should take something from that base you know so, so when it destroys the deep water guard it should have took um their like um, weird how do you call it the huge kind of ship in the middle and use that as part of the hull or something and that's not a bad idea so i could almost say if i if i recolored this and made it look a bit better i could say well this was stolen from the um, oh god i'm actually inside the cannon well, that's one way of making sure it works. I said that's one way. Um. Oh, okay. Well, I'm actually aiming the wrong way. Oh, well, let's listen to that. Oh, my lord. Look at the size of those shit. That is actually wonderful. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. To, to teleport to it. I but think okay, I've decided I so. Um, this this will will works for now. Works, I suppose. Episode, you can see I'll the shell. Making here. sure it looks a bit better than that. Currently, a bit more presentable off camera before the next time. And next time, we will be continuing the campaign. Or. Making a new ship, so and so. Yes, indeed. I am planning on making a few assist ships because I've decided we should stop having just huge ships. We should also have some smaller ships. And I'm kind of looking into either A, making a ship which is permanently docked with the E. coli as a, as a healing ship, or possibly a little, or a little um, distraction ship, or making a few little ships which are independent of the E. coli and simply go on their own kind of merit. 
engines on, and we can still turn actually surprisingly well. So that's great. Okay, turn off. We'll still have to work on turning by by simply adding some more sideways. Um, sideways rudders, rotors, uh, whatever you want to call them. So yeah, thank you so much for watching Stone Sets. I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and I hope you're enjoying the progress with the Ecoli. I will, again, I promise to make it look better by next time, and every time we come back, eventually, it'll be a finished ship. I don't think I'll be making it much bigger than it is currently. I love the idea of the fact it's now three ships strapped onto... Sorry, it's two... It's two um, old freighter ships strapped onto a battleship, which, 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 which itself is essentially just loads of pieces strapped together. I really do like that kind of style. I've always loved that kind of style. That's why I've always loved the kind of... Um, the uh, Back in Warhammer, I played Orcs, which are very much like that. They scavenge and rebuild and kind of repurpose things they find. So, like I was going to say, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video and are enjoying the series of the Sarve, and of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, I can't stress that enough, most importantly, shows that Reassembly is a series you wish to see continued in the future. So thank you, and goodbye. Have a lovely day, and of course, do take care.